Greetings and welcome to the club. I'm Victor Rodriguez and I'm your host for CPIT 101. Today's episode is the pilot episode. We're going to visualize our new cockpit, get some ideas for it, and see how we can start our construction. But first, check out some Q&A here. My take on virtual reality, it is awesome. It's very immersive. If there are a lot of buttons to press in the game, I find it a little forgetful for me to remember where those buttons are in my real cockpit. I could program them as cords on my Thrustmaster Hotea system, pressing one button like a shift and then the trigger button becomes something different. I will not be able to remember that. I have a hard time remembering that many button presses for something like Elite Dangerous. So therefore, for Elite Dangerous, I like to see buttons that are illuminated and labeled when possible, or at least in little clusters and groups, so I can remember what's what. If company comes, it's also nice for them to come over and they sit in the cockpit with me. Really looks cool for spectators. VR, not so much unless you're in the headset. But there is something I can say is, you could take both of them. Flip with your headset when you want to, use the real cockpit when you want to have some fun with that. So you don't really have to decide which one is which if you're going to build a cockpit. The cheaper route, take the goggles. More expensive, to me gratifying route, is the cockpit slash both of them. Game data can be shown on the MFDs. It's pretty simple if you have the right game. Falcon BMS really works great with that. DCS, Digital Combat Simulator, also does a nice job of it. Now, if you move to the space simulators, which is probably what the audience here is all about, it's a little more complex. The games are not set up just like the Falcon games are. As such, you need to grab some game data. Fortunately, in Elite Dangerous, there's a commander's journal. This has a log of many different commands that are happening within the game. You can pull those commands out, and by knowing some of the keywords, you can extrapolate the events that are happening, such as landing, uh, attacking, scanning, uh, things of that nature. With that information, you can change the animations a little bit. You can totally change them, actually. You can have your hyperspace whenever you go into hyperspace, an animation comes up for that. If you scan in a planet, you can have an animation come up for that. X3 has some data I was able to use, uh, which was pretty fun. And I'm just uncovering some X4 data that supposedly I can grab in real time. So I hope to be able to show you that on the MFDs pretty soon. The buttons and lights are very functional in my game. Every single button, except the overhead lights and, and button configurations, they're, they're programmable keyboards, uh, macros and such. The lights, they're totally independent of the switch. I've used a, a program, Auto Hotkey, so that when I press a button, it illuminates the corresponding light beneath the button. However, it could just as easily light the lights next to it or it could turn all the lights on or all the lights off or blink the lights, not just merely pulse the light whenever the button is pressed. So really a lot of functionality there. There's also some animations that can be built into the lighting. So very complex lighting can be done with the single press of any kind of button you can think of. Million dollar question, how much will it cost? Well, factor in the price of a good hotel setup, including pedals, your, any displays you want. You want one extra display or four displays or five. Add the cost for good displays in there. You need a controller board to 
uh, accept all your buttons and push out your digital outputs for your lights and you need some money for your actual cockpit itself and I'm not sure if you want to include the cost of uh, monitors or TVs or projectors in there so that could run you some bucks but it's not too hard to put together a bill of material list and a basic price list and you can figure out your price and stay within your own budget it it took me about two and a half years to build my first cockpit of course this was an entire room it was an attic room and I had to renovate the entire attic room itself insulate it put new flooring down and so on and so forth and it depends on the level of complexity that you want if you start off small you can always add on to it start with your your main cockpit and branch out So do you wonder, will this work with your game? If you can get any kind of variables from the game whatsoever, it would sure help. Otherwise, you're gonna use these displays as a mere ambiance, which don't get me wrong, you can put some really nice animations in there and have them either cycle, turn on, off, or static pictures, and it really does nice. Could be something like just some crosshairs or generic radar display, or as you see, a lot of times I've got a little radar that's just kind of like twirling around. Works really good. Really nice. I like it. Before we start actually building, I'd like to talk about visualization first. Let's start thinking about what is it you really want from your cockpit? Is it really going to be just a plain sit-down cockpit? Nothing wrong with that. 100% cockpit. Perhaps you would like to be able to be a little flexible, maybe switch it out with a steering wheel so you could play some racing games on there. Uh, maybe you'd like to have some virtual reality capabilities. Can you use a headset inside your cockpit comfortably? Maybe you have to move the consoles aside because some games you need to be able to flail your arms around while sitting. Or you may need to stand up. Do you have room in your cockpit for something like this? Something I thought of was web browsing. There's some evenings I'm not feeling like playing the game. I just want to sit down and browse the internet. The other thing you can think of is office work. Sometimes you need to just spread everything out. If you don't have office work, then you just have a cockpit. Not a problem. In this stage, I can stand up and play virtual reality games. Now, I can't really do a whole lot of Beat Saber action, jumping around and swatting this, swatting that, and whatnot. I'm fortunate that I can go on the other side of the wall here and the cable's long enough where I have space over there. If I just want to do some quick web browsing, I just slide one console, slide it in a position right next to me. The right one, of course, since uh, that's where the mouse is at for me. This is my classic cockpit style. Now the chair normally leans back and it sits back uh, into little grooves that are in the, in the consoles. Kind of keeps the chair in its reclining position and keeps you from moving around but your, your hands are at a good level and you're ready for cockpit action and it works very good with the headset or without the headset now if I want to play a sit down virtual reality game where I can flail my arms the consoles can be pushed to either side all the way against the wall if need be the keyboard tray pulls out custom made so I could pull it out push it all the way back in I can spin my chair around play me some virtual reality games and uh, the, com the cockpit accommodates that. In this position I just have a large tabletop that I place over the consoles that are a little bit spread out. It's spaced up so I can uh, get my legs under it very comfortably. I can sit upright or I can still recline backwards. And I have a lot of space on this desktop to be able to lay out drawings, notes, coffee mug, pencils, pin, whatever I need, and I can still see all my model, my monitors. So for 3D design, this is top notch. I really, really like this setup, and I'm, I'm glad I made the cockpit versatile to be able to accommodate a big desktop like this. Well, thanks for watching. If you know any other builders out there, recommend them to the channel here. And if you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button. See you later for CPIT 101.